This is Lori with ArdentDesigns.ca. In today's tutorial, we're going to be learning how to do this pretty simple, very cool badge logo design using Inkscape. So let's open up our Inkscape. We'll get started. We'll go to File, Document Properties. Let's uncheck Show Page Border. We'll choose Pixels as our display units. Close out of this menu. We'll go to View, Zoom, one to one, and then we'll open up our Align and Distribute, Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients menu. We'll start by going to the Stars and Polygons tool. Click on that. Press control as you're dragging your polygon and then you'll be sure to have your points up and down. So let's select this. I have a stroke on here which I'm going to take off for now. Press shift and X if you also have a stroke. We'll just, uh, we'll just have the fill for now. So you should have fill down here, black, and stroke set to none. Let's squish this down a little bit, not too much. And we'll scale it up just a little bit bigger. Now what we're going to do is we're going to round these corners by going up to path and dynamic offset. We'll just pull this up just a little bit. We'll give it a little bit of a round. And the more you pull it up, the more round the corners will be. I'm just going to do it a little bit. Go back to the select tool path, object to path to finalize that. Right click on this. We'll go to duplicate. We'll take the fill off by pressing the X button in the bottom left corner there. Press shift and red. We'll give it a red stroke. We'll drop the stroke to the bottom using this button up here. Lower selection to the bottom and come over to the fill and stroke style tab and choose 10. I don't know why it says 10.01 but 10 is good enough and I'm going to take these snaps off because they will get in the way. I'm just going to press shift and control and I'm going to scale this up and the space in between is up to you to how much space you have in between. I'm just going to go with a little bit there and um, click off the graphic for now. Let's Okay, this is the fun part here. What I've done is I've chosen a, uh, a vector off of Pixabay. And I'm going to show you actually how you can create your own vector. So I'm going to go to my desktop. I'm going to search for a photo that I dropped there earlier. So I'll go to desktop and then just drag and drop the picture in. And you want to make sure that embed is selected. Click OK. And let's shrink this down a little bit, press shift and control and we'll shrink it down really small. So this is an image. We need to make this a vector. So let's go to path, trace bitmap, and you want to make sure that your live preview is ticked. Let's choose, I know that I usually try for this color quantization, but I know that it's not going to work. So you can, uh, you can try, maybe it'll work for you. I'm going to go with uh, grays. Click on that and it comes out pretty good. So let's let's see if I can get away with two. And that's not even that bad either. So I'm going to go with two and grays. I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to click out of this menu. And move this aside. This will be our vector and this image here. Let's delete it. We don't need it. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this in here. Let's zoom to look at our graphic in depth here. So I'm going to shrink this down using shift and control and I'm basically going to make several copies of this. So control D, duplicate is control D. We're going to do this a few times. So control D, do this several times and we're just going to make basically the way it would look if it was a forest. I'm going to make tall skinny trees, maybe tall fat trees. And uh, we're going to have like an up and down kind of look to it. Let me just show you what the picture looks like here. So it, it's up and down like that. And then it kind of tapers off at the end there. Okay, so it, it's going to take a few minutes and, and try and get that accomplished as quickly as possible. We don't take up too much of the tutorial building a forest here. So obviously you can take your time doing this and make it look a lot nicer than what I will do. And don't worry about the overlap here. Not too much. Oh, last one. Okay, let's get that up. Let's 
control D, I'll duplicate that and position it there. duplicate a bunch of these. Control D to duplicate. Let's move it over about here. Okay, now I don't want these, uh, let's see. Yeah, it, is, it actually doesn't matter how far down they come. because the text is also going in the negative space. There's a faster way to do this. Okay, let's group them all together, or actually we'll union them together. That's not bad. I think I wanted this one a little smaller. Maybe these ones a little bigger. If you have a hard time selecting, just zoom in. There we go. like this space there. Yeah. Just I'm looking at the space here at the bottom. I think I'd like that as dark as possible. tree to look silly though. Okay, so let's zoom out here. Say maybe. Okay, let's union them all together. Path, union, so they're all one object. And then I'm going to press shift and select the black object. We'll go path, difference, and that's how we get the that look. Okay, so we got to neaten up the bottom here. So let's work on that. So let's let's go to the ovals tool, or sorry, the circles tool, and we'll create an oval. So let's create a long oval like that, and let's let's make it make it a different color. Let's try this this dull green here. So let's fill it in and let's press shift and X to get rid of the stroke there. Now, I think I actually tilted this. Oh, maybe not. So yeah, I did, I did tilt it a little bit. So let's just, and that's up to you. You can have the text straight if you like. It makes it a little bit more exciting when you can tilt it. So we'll, we'll position it about here just to make sure that we're getting the rough edges at the bottom of the, the trees off here. And I'm going to duplicate this, duplicate it, and we'll turn this a different color, maybe, maybe the dull green here. And I'll press control and I'll move that down to about there. And I'm going to duplicate this, right click, go to duplicate. I'm going to press shift and select the blue object. We'll go path, difference. And I'm going to use this. I'm going to press shift and select this object here, the black object. We'll go path. 
difference and path break apart. So now that's what we have there. Control Z, I'm going to put it back. I'm actually going to move this up. Actually, no, I'm going to leave it right there. So this is the path where we're going to put the text on. So let's grab our text tool, click on the A, click on the board, and I wrote outdoors in caps letters. Make sure your caps is on. Outdoors. Select the text, go to the text tool. And I chose a font called Hagen Caps. Hagen Caps Medium. Click Apply. I'll scale that up, press Shift and Control. Now we'll close out of the uh, text menu. We don't need that anymore. See how that will look here. That's pretty big. Okay. I'll scale it down just a little bit. Maybe there. Okay, so let's put that aside for now. And I'll press Shift and I'll select this green object here. And we'll go Text, Put on Path, and click off the graphic. Let's select the text here. Go to your text tool and you get this little cursor here. You need to press the left arrow key, which is going to seem kind of backwards, but that's the way it works. So now let's press our spacebar once we get the air, our cursor key in front of the, there, or the, the O. <laughs> and then we'll press the spacebar until we get it to a position that we like. And one more, no, back. Okay, so go back to the select tool. And I think I'm actually gonna push this circle up a little bit. So let's press control. Let's move it up just a little bit so that we have a little bit of space here. And it should be even amount of space with the, the rest of this stroke here. So, when you're satisfied that with that, let's click on the text here and we'll go path, object to path, and then we can remove this circle. Press delete and let's zoom out. Start to bring up the opacity here and see what that looks like. There we go. Okay. Let's make that I'm actually, I think it looks better all control Z. I'll make, undo that. Okay, red stroke, press shift and black. I think it's actually going to end up looking better all white, as in my picture here, and it'll just take on the background of whatever, but we won't see it on this screen. So let's carry on here. I think I just did established 1907, just picked a number. Text again uh, EST. Uh, 1907. I'll select it. We'll turn it white so we can see it. Press Shift and Control so we can make it bigger. Let's go to the text tool and we'll choose Hagen Caps again. Click Apply. Close out of this menu. Press Shift and select this out outer rectangle here or rectangle octagon and we'll center that on the vertical axis. Click off the graphic. And let's finalize this text here. Let's go path, object to path. That's finalized. And then lastly, we'll just go to the stars tool, press control and drag to create. Uh, let's choose stars first. Let's go up to our menu here. Let's choose stars and five for corners, 0.375. Press control and we'll drag to create a perfect star. And the reason why I press control is so this one point goes downwards. And then we're just going to select it and then flip it the other way. So, so then the, the points are even. So let's take the stroke off, press shift and X, and then we'll fill it in with white. So let's grab this star, put it over here. Let's shift and control to scale it down. Grab the scaling handle, uh, still too big. Press shift and control and I'll actually scale in so that I can see it here. Shift and control. So right, right click and we'll go to duplicate. Press control and drag it straight. 
press shift to select the other star, we'll group them together, press shift to select the EST, and we'll align that so that it's centered. So let's click off the graphic, let's zoom out using the minus key, see how everything looks here. Now lastly we have to, let's actually put a background on this so that we can understand what we're doing here. So I'm going to grab the rectangle tool. I'm going to click to drag a rectangle. Let's color it in any color. It doesn't matter. Select it, drop it to the bottom. Okay, so now we, we can see that it looks pretty good. Let's, uh, let's turn the whole thing. Let's turn the graphic. Let's turn it white. Oops. Okay, that's a mistake. Okay, select this. Press shift. Select that, let's turn it white. And the text in here, let's turn that black. And I'm gonna ungroup this, ungroup everything. And then I'm gonna go path, union to make it all one piece. Press shift to select this white piece here. And we'll go path, difference. And then it takes on the color of the underneath part. So that's what we're getting at here. And this here, I think I just colored that white too. Yeah, okay. So we'll color that white. And all these pieces, I'm going to press delete. All these pieces. Those were extra bits. That's why I was trying to get the, the trees closer together. So that's just a little tip for when you're when you're creating that tree back. So let's let's go to the select tool here. Let's, let's uh, zoom in. And let's make sure we turn this white. Whoops, control Z. Make sure I've got the right thing selected. Press shift and white. We'll finalize that by going to path, stroke to path, and let's zoom out. Let's grab the entire graphic and we will group it together. And if you like the tutorial, please like, subscribe, find me on Facebook to get updates on new tutorials. And as always, thank you for watching.